All right, well, it's our last week of the Influencer Series. I hope this has been helpful for you, challenging for you, encouraging, instructive. I hope you're growing in your influence. I hope those prayer guides are being useful. And I hope, I hope you're being able to be more intentional. That's what I really hope, because that's so important in living a life that is a, of an influencer for the gospel, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let's remember what influence is. It is um, using who we are and what we have to help others be and do all that God created them for. Really using our life, leveraging our lives so that the lives of others can be lived in the hope, grace, and salvation of Christ and then lived in faithfulness to him and serving him. And uh, that is my hope for each of you as a believer. And today I wanna talk about an important word for me and I wanna encourage you with, and it's the word legacy. That if we're really gonna live a life of an influencer, that we're gonna leave behind this, this legacy of faith and of truth. And so today in 1 Corinthians chapter four, I want you to consider these truths with me, starting in verse 14. I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. By the way, Paul was having to kind of get on to the Corinthian believers about some things and, and he loved them and it was awkward for him via letter to do that because he couldn't come at the time. He said, hey, you're my beloved children. Don't, I'm not trying to shame you, but I am trying to correct you. For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. All right, now, man, there's a huge distinction we're gonna talk about that is the difference between a guide and a father. Um, but it says this, I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach them everywhere in every church and then he talks about how some are teaching in contrast to those things. And, but he says this, for the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod or with love and the spirit of gentleness? Like, how am I gonna, am I, am I still gonna be correcting you when I get there? Or am I gonna be able to come because you've responded to the truth? And he had sent them Timothy, this, this one that he had raised up as a child in the faith who now could be a, another spiritual father to them. But here is the thought I want you to have. A guide is responsible for the moment at hand. Like when you're following a guide around, when you're on a tour, that guide is responsible for what's happening right now. A father is responsible for the moments ahead. Yes, they're responsible for what's at hand, but they're responsible for what is ahead. Live in this moment in such a way that honors the moments that are beyond and are bigger than the moment you're in. We have to live it in every moment in such a way that it honors this moment in such a way that it's also honoring the bigger moments that are beyond this one. We have to be faithful with this one in such a way that we're considering faithfulness in the ones ahead. That we do things in such a way today that allows us to have more influence, more capacity to be used of the Lord tomorrow than we did today. That we would make those kinds of decisions. When we're, when we're raising our children, we remember that, man, it, it's, it's a long journey that we're influencing towards them towards Christ, not in a singular moment, but man, there's a lot of moments that matter, but they matter in the moments that are beyond this one and are bigger than this one. Who are you becoming a spiritual father or mother to, a parent to? We're all brothers and sisters in Christ, but are we passing it along? You know, in scripture, older believers are encouraged in this way that, that, that older men are to invest themselves in the, the, the bringing up of younger men and that, that older women are to invest themselves in the bringing up of, of younger women and, and the ways of the Lord. You know, one of the things, that I'm gonna challenge you with is there's really, when it comes to spiritual things, spiritual retirement is a sin. There's no checking out of the kingdom of God. Like, man, if God has brought you thus far, he wants thus, that what, he's, that, that what it's, he has done in your life to be used to help others who are further behind you in this. Like God has a purpose and that he has a desire for that. And we need to be faithful to it. You know, there's some difference between guides and fathers. And one of the main ones is investment. You know, a guide has a job. A father has a calling. 
Do you care about the soul of another to go beyond just guiding? Are you going to go beyond just kind of simply teaching? Are you willing to put at risk the feelings of a relationship to fight the good fight for the gospel and for truth? You know, sometimes that means you have to to be a part of that reproving, rebuking, and correcting that we talked about last week. That you have to be part of correcting and training someone else and saying, hey, I, I don't see where you're going with this. What's this decision about? You have to be willing to really invest. That's what a father does. He asks the harder questions. Um, and I'm so grateful for a dad who was willing to ask me some tough questions along the way because he led me and challenged me in the truth. And the, and, the, and the truth of today is this, man, the church, the body of Christ needs more spiritual parents. It needs some people who are going beyond just being a guide who are, are doing more than saying, hey, here's the truth, go that way. And they're saying, hey, here's some things that are true. Come with me. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk along with you. You know, that we're gonna invest our lives in, in the life of, of some others. You know, Paul in this passage speaks about Timothy and, and he's literally encouraging them, hey, Hey, Timothy's going to guide you in these things. But he's already been a spiritual father to Timothy. He's invested that in him. And he knows that Timothy can invest that in others. That's the legacy. That we would live out our faith in, in such a way that it would cause faithfulness in moments and in lives bigger than and beyond the moment we're living in. Actually, I wanted to find it this way. A legacy is lives changed beyond yours because of yours. A legacy is lives that are changed beyond your life because of your life. That that we're gonna be faithful in this generation and it's gonna have impact on the next generation. And because of that impact on the next generation, it's going to have impact on the next generation that we see beyond just the moment we're living in. Are are you willing to to really invest in some other people? If you want to be a real influencer, be a spiritual father, not just a guide. Be a spiritual mother. Uh, Go beyond simple instruction and words and invest your life in loving and caring for and leading walking along with others. That's how gospel influence is intended to be lived. A few questions to consider. Who has been willing to be a spiritual parent in your life and not just a guide? What was different kind of through and about them? What makes you most nervous about taking that place in someone's life? I mean, this, this whole reality of Paul saying, be imitators of me as I am, I am of Christ, man, it's intimidating. What is it that you struggle with about that? And who in particular do you feel led to invest in in that way spiritually? Pray for each other right now as a group to have wisdom and insight into such obedience. So I hope what you've gained through this study and this series is an intentional view of living life to influence others in such a way that our lives and our words and our actions proclaim the gospel and lead others to grow in Christ. That we're constantly being used to influence those who do not know Christ to know him, those who know Christ to grow in him, those who are growing in Christ to serve him, and those who are serving Christ to lead for Christ. And that out of that would come a legacy of faith from generation to generation because of the faithfulness of of this generation right here at Fellowship Church. Man, I want to encourage you, be an influencer. God has a mission for you right here, right now. Embrace it.